Hello and welcome to a slightly different video. Um, this one's kind of a little bit, um, not quite full tutorial, more of a talky with a few tips and me showing you a few tricks and mostly flash. Um, this little talk was inspired by um, conversations I've been having my blog with Writing Bolt. Big shout out to you there and thank you very much for being my little inspiration there. Um, he asked a question, is it possible to animate without drawing in the conventional sense? Um, if the conventional sense for you is pencil to paper, then um, yeah, it is possible to animate without having to use conventional methods. Um, if you're more prone to open, if you're open to using any mark making materials, I mean, um, in the past, I've done back in college, I've done paintings using leaves and twigs and all kinds of stuff, and anything that can make a mark, in my opinion, can make an image. And really, with animation, it is um, a series of images that you are showing. So this one's going to be more about drawing without having to use um, a pencil in the conventional sense, more with the mouse. So here in this little image, um, I will admit this little character is meant to be um, like a little angry mouse squaring off to the pencil there. Um, this mouse character, I will admit, it was drawn without with a mouse. It was no graphics tablet, no um, pencil, no nothing, just a mouse. And as you can clearly see, it's not my strongest point using um, a mouse. Um, and with the pencil, um, that was drawn. Um, also, I would give a shout out to Draw of Jazza, who's made a fantastic video about um, con well, not conquering, but dealing with demotivation, um, where you feel demotivated and it could lead to potential depression um, if you get into that bad spiral. So what I tend to do, especially recently, is um, comment on the stuff I'm drawing, comment on the stuff I'm doing, and actually say what I like more about my drawings. Um, this was probably me to start with, so you're there, you're drawing, you try and draw, but then you're not happy with what you're drawing, so you think, okay, I'll crunch it up, throw it away. You are getting yourself into a bit of a bad debacle. It's good to be a perfectionist in some regard, it's good to notice when you're making errors, but... Unfortunately, you start getting yourself into a bit more of a um, loop. You know, you start building up, you start getting more and more papers, the pile of papers go around you. His little character, he's in the vital stick figure, he's getting very unhappy and he's close to breaking point. You see the piles of paper just where he's thrown away his old drawings and everything pulling up. And yes, th there are days where this is you. You feel. Oh, I can't draw. Anything I produce is rubbish. Yeah, that is that is human. We are not robots. We do make errors. Some days we have bad days. Sometimes it's just good to just sit back, relax, maybe even go for a walk, or just accept. I'm not having a good day today, but I can do better. And maybe even taking someone to give you like, a bit of a pat on the back and just say, look, I can see where the errors are, you just need to do X, Y, and Z. Sometimes some cre creative critique I find really helps me. I'm often turning to my friends and just saying, please can you check this out and let me know what you think? And they let me know and that's always been a great help to me. And But if you don't have that support, I can understand, use the internet, go on forums, make internet friends, get a community going before you turn into this. That has been me quite a few times, just breathing fire and <laughs> being horrible. You don't quite want to get into that. That's you don't want to get into that stage. That can really demotivate demotivate you, and it really demotivated me quite a lot. So we don't want to do that. Don't if you find that 
drawing doesn't come that naturally to you if you really, really struggle, except maybe the pencil's not my strongest point. Why not try out different drawing materials? There's charcoal, paint, etc. You don't even have to restrict yourself to traditional methods. You can go ahead and, you know, as I say, get a graphics tablet or you can um, use a mouse. It is possible to draw with a mouse. But there are many tips that I want to dispel. There's many things that people say to me that really annoy me. Um, the one thing is, Vicky, I cannot draw. Um, okay, first, I'm, my reply to you is if you can draw a shape and lines, or draw shapes or lines, doesn't matter if they're perfect circles or the ovals or the lines are slightly crooked, in my opinion, as long as you can do that, you can draw. And you can see this was very roughly done. This was not perfected, so that's a very rough mouse. <laughs> not that brilliant, but as you can see, you tell the mouse. If you can do better than me, then you bet, you know, you can draw. You can draw. And unfortunately, very much like, in my opinion, any skill, and again, this is my opinion, you can, are welcome to disagree with me. Um, it's all about practicing. Now, for me, um, I did try and learn guitar at one point, and it, I just, I'm, I will admit, I can play the piano ish. Um, I did take lessons, I did get some couple certificates for piano forte and that, but if anyone asked me to sit down and compose a piece, I would just start slamming my fingers all over the place without any coordination, and it would just sound like drivel. I don't have that skill. I cannot just, you know, instantly compose something there. Maybe in time if I practiced, but it, that's something that doesn't come naturally to me. Um, coding? Doing any PHP coding, that's something I could practice, I would struggle with, but it's something that doesn't come naturally to me. What comes more naturally to me um, is drawing. I'll not admit, I'll admit I'm not the best out there. I've seen amazing artists, but um, it's something that I'm stronger at than most things. <laughs> um, I can also knit. That's a nice, nice little thing there. Um, so there you go. If you can make a shape, you can draw. And again, like many skills or many techniques, it's all about practicing, practicing, practicing. So you hear that often. Um, again, a point I made earlier, drawing isn't limited to a pencil. Um, actually, I was friends with someone on the internet for a while, we were talking and he made little flash animations and then later on I found out that he actually, when I was talking about graphics tablets, he told me that, um, I think he, if I recall correctly, he's slightly disabled, well I hate using the word disabled, where he cannot hold a pencil properly or hold a pen. So he animates mo mostly by using a mouse and he did some really great work. And in my opinion, you know, again, you're not limited to drawing a pencil. Heck, if you can use a stick and point at things, or a mouse, or any other device, even touch screen, use your fingers, like finger painting, as long as it's a really nice image that you're pleased with, that's cool. Even if you use MS Paint, um, again, I've seen some really great things from there. Um, I would recommend people perhaps checking out other programs, um, Adobe Photoshop, that's a really good one, Flash, definitely recommend that because um, you've got a bit more control and some people they say, er, I'm using layers, it doesn't feel natural or um, using um, the undo button, Come on, I, I, my fingers automatically go for that undo button. There's no shame in undoing something, realizing I can do a better line or I can do a better shape. Just undo, draw, undo, draw that line until you get it right. Even if you have to do it a hundred times, there's been times where I actually have done it a hundred times. So that is absolutely fine. Um, another great tip, gain an understanding of shape and form. Um, even if you're doing things like making 3D models in Maya and as long as you have a general idea of shape and form and how something is supposed to look, 
then you're good. You may not be able to draw, but you can still make great images. Again, you know, using, um, if you're using Illustrator, you're using very much the pen tool in that one. Um, very similar to how we're going to be using the line tool in Flash in a moment. So yes, and for some people who feel I can draw a mouse, I want to draw digitally, there is a device out there, that's the graphics tablet, and that's often what I use. That's my poor, <laughs> poor quick sketch representing my trust tablet, but I recommend people, if you're going for a tablet, look at the Wacom ones. The reason I brought my trust one, A, it was cheap, B, it seems to do the job at the time, but recently I noticed it's gone up in price, so... I would say to people now, just go to Wacom. One day I'll have my Wacom. One day. So what I'm going to do in this demonstration today, if I can switch over to the Flash program. Oh, we will be using this robot in a moment while I explain things. I'm just going to quickly show you um, how I can draw without using a, a, a pen, a graphics tablet or a pencil. So very quickly I'm going to draw in Flash my little character W the Red Mouse. Um, let me speed this up. Okay, there's a very quick rough sketch of Dobby the Red Mouse. Um, I haven't drawn him in a while, so I'm a little bit out of practice with this one, but there he is. And what I'm going to do next is um, I'm actually going to put my graphics tablet away. You can hear graphics pen going down. There you go. I, I've dropped it on a comfy chair, it's not broken. I show you there. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do um, very quickly that was using um, graphics tablet, brush, quick eraser for the little dot on the nose there. So, yes, and pressure sensitivity, that's going off. Not using that. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use vector shapes. And it is possible to draw, recreate this image, maybe even better and smoother, using shapes. So, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to be switching to the rectangle and the oval tool, but since this character um, is going to be with a black nose, I'm going to just draw black nose, holding shift to keep the proportions. I always do that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the fill color off because I'm going to switch between the line and actually I think it's just the line tool and maybe the oval tool for I'll do eyes and eyeballs and things like that. So what I'm going to do, just draw a line here. Oop, that's a bit too thick. I'm going to go to properties and change that to two. Uh, yeah, it's a bit better. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do kind of a blocky version of my character and what we can do next is get the basic selector tool press V on your keyboards and just curve these lines this character uh, drawn it for a few years now haven't drawn it recently so a little bit out of practice there so I have a good understanding of how he's supposed to look I'm already this is looking a bit better than that guy might move So all I did was curve some lines and things like that. You can always get the lasso tool. And again, I'm doing this purely with a mouse. I'm not very good at drawing with a mouse, so I'm a bit limited here. So I may speed things up a bit just to complete this image. But you can see I can draw without a pen. Okay, and there we go, I've got 
I'm ready to dobby. Oop, we've got one little bit. Get the erase tool and just... There we go, a bit of shine for his nose. So there you go. I've created purely with a mouse and I think this one looks a lot cleaner. Um, you don't get nice lines. I'll admit this drawing one here is a bit rushed. Um, I will admit I prefer the drawing one sometimes, but when I want to do clean stuff, I will switch between the two. So very quickly, that's how I made mouse. You notice that I had to manipulate, move things a little bit, and etc. So yes, it's okay to undo, redo, fix things around. Again, the lovely thing with Flash is that you can manipulate lines and get the image looking just right. And there's nothing wrong with it. Um, for me, it feels very much like you're sculpting. Because when you get a lump of clay, you've got to pull, push it, get into shape, etc. So it's a lot about manipulating the image. So there you go, there's my nice little red mouse there. Um, one thing you can also do that's um, with Flash, especially I think since um, CS4 to up onwards, um, this one I'm using is CS6. I um, prefer CS6 to CC because. Um, I'll admit, I prefer using Action Script 2, Action Script 3, again, coding, not my thing, but yeah, and I prefer the interface with CS6, it's a lot better in my opinion, but um, yeah, so there's my little red mouse, so I'm going to go over to my robot, now this one is one I pinched from a series of tutorials, um, years ago, but I can't remember <laughs> where I got them from, so I'll try and find them and put the link in the description. Um, this little guy, um, I'm going to use him, he's mainly made out of shapes, um, all of them are movie clips. Um, when There's a setting called the Bone Tool, which is very similar for anyone who does 3D stuff to using IK handles. Our, um, joints in Maya or 3D Max. Um, I think it's, it's actually identical to that. Yes, you can add joints, you can add bones to something, but they only work if the objects that you're selecting are movie clips. So you do have to convert something into a movie clip. For anyone that's unsure how to do that, um, I can draw something like a nice little. This is using a mouse. Again. So anyone that wants to comment saying, "Er, you're rubbish at drawing," I'm using a mouse here for goodness sakes. So I can right-click and convert to symbol, and from here I can make it movie clips, buttons, all kinds of cool things. But the buttons we want. So I'm going to delete that for now. And what we're going to do, I'm very simply going to add a bone and show you how you can use the bone tool on just the arm of this character and make really nice animations again without having to draw in the conventional sense. So you can make a character very similar to how I made Dobby, but with this one in you have to keep you have to convert them to movie clips as you go along. It takes a bit of time to get used to that, so you will have to build like underneath there and things like that. So this guy, if you look in the library, he has a lot of sections there. He has a lot of movie clips. So yes. Anyway, if we go over to the uh, tools, we can see here we've got the bone tool, which is also M on your keyboard. So I'm going to be using that. Um, this document is using Action Script 3. So if anyone that wants to know, file new, especially if you're using CS6, if you're using CC, you don't have any Action Script 2 option, it's just free. So if you're going to be using the bone tool, make sure your document is Action Script 3 to begin with. Too. If you're planning on doing coding or anything in Flash and you want to use the bone tool, you've got to learn Action Script 3. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm at Action Script 3 not my strongest point. So I've got my bone tool ready. I want to click on his shoulder. I'm going to click to assign it to there and drag it over to the elbow. And there we go, I've got bones. And I'm just going to click and drag and assign it to the wrist here. And as we can see, after I've drawn the second joint, it's showing me the blue outline of the movie clips that are being used. And I'm quite happy with that for now. So I've got my bone tool, I'm going to get my selected tool and just click on the bone so you can see I can actually move them. I can even click on this movie clip 
and move it around. So, oops. oh, what have I done? Oh dear. So there we go. So just undo my little movements there. And you can do this to the other movie clips as well. It's a bit trickier with other ones because especially ones behind this guy. Let's see if I could do it without much hassle. Can I? No, it's not doing it. You don't need to put maybe put things on separate layers, etc. But at the moment his body is in the way here. So yes. And he's only got one robotic leg there, so in my opinion you could just simply use the the pivot tool. Um, again, if you're unsure how to use those tools, um, whenever you use uh, yes, it is midday, <laughs> so the clock's chiming outside. You've got the free transform tool, and you've got this white little dot. Usually it's dead center. That's the pivot point. So if I rotate, it goes along that pivot point. But I can rotate, put reposition that to be there, so that's my pivot point. Um, if you're doing any animations or tweening, remember, do your pivot point first before you make your other frames and tweening, because if it's a, if different movie clips have different pivot points, especially classic tween, you're going to have hassle there. So for now, this is all lovingly done. We've got our animation and over here, if we look in, we've got a layer, which is the rest of our character, except for his arm. His arm has been now assigned to Armature 2 there, so you can always rename it. So if I click on there, there's his arm. Can I get his bones back? Or will I have to go on the bone tool? Yeah, I would have to go on the bone tool just to click and bring that back up. So if I wanted to animate this now, I can go to frame 20. I'm going to right click because I want to keyframe this. And um, actually, it's not keyframing, you insert a pose. But you could just press F6 if you use the shortcuts on Flash, and it does the same thing. And I'm just going to extend him there. So that one was just insert frame so it lasts more than one. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click. Yeah, if you click on this position there, I can reposition his bones. So he's going, oopsie, I did something. And then, very much like in any 3D program involving bones, joints, etc., the flash will automatically do the in between for you. You can also add another position in there, so I can do, actually, there you go, it's automatically keying my position. So I've got. So you can do a quick swing, then oh, hello, I'm a robot. I go to this one and go like pull this hand there, going so it's going doink. Now this character is quite easy. He's quite an easy one to work with. Um, only problem that you will have sometimes if we have a look very carefully as I'm playing this animation at his shoulder you can see the position of it is going off a bit. There will be times where the edges, you have to be careful of those corners and the elbow or anywhere it bends, it can look a bit out of proportion. I'll admit this is not a tool I use that often. I am very much old school, I prefer frame by frame with maybe tweening in it if needed, if it's going to be just a bug walking across the ground and just animate the bug in the movie clip. So there you go, there's a couple of tips that you can do. Um, again, you know, you can draw, you can make fantastic images and make them even better and shade them. You can even use gradients to add that lovely tone. So if I selected his little nose there, I'll switch that to a gradient. And that's my bucket full, I told you, so I can change the direction of it. Actually, it's better if you go to Great Transform Tool, then you can change where his shine is there. So you can, again, add gradients to really make your images pop out, and you saw how easy that is there, and you can check out tutorials online on how to personalize gradients, or just throw yourself in there, play around. And yes, there we go, we've got, that's how you can draw, make animations, etc. without having to draw in the conventional sense. Um, but I would say to anyone that wants to learn any new skills, just practice, don't get too frustrated, and a tip from Jazza, which I'm adopting, um, every, every image you draw, anything you do, find at least one thing you like in it. 
and tell yourself, I like this. This is, even if it's just, I like that tiny microscopic line, the rest of the drawing I hate, but that little line I like. Even if it's something as simple as that, do it. It really does keep you more motivated and you don't end up wanting to destroy the world. So, hopefully you found this useful or helpful in any way. Um, anything, you can leave any comments, etc. You know how it's done. Catch you later.